Okay. Welcome to the April. Yes, oh my gosh, it's already April. 2017 Elder Meeting, Global Elder Meeting. Thanks for joining us. If you haven't signed in already, please do so in the scrolls. And in my, yes, okay. We have uh, quite a few things to go over this evening. Going to be good stuff. And if you haven't been here before, we have a swear jar, so don't swear because then you have to put stuff in. It's usually me or book that ends up breaking that rule first. But we're going to try to get through this one clean. So if you were watching this after... Uh, via the recording, please post your comments of what you thought to um, as you're watching this, and you may get some XP for that. At least you get credit for watching and participating, even if you couldn't make it during the live showing. The yeah, so I know we're going to have some uh, people coming on here yet which will be a little bit late, but that's okay. A lot of stuff going on. No, it's not in here, Michael. And if you want to say something, typically I got five screens up, so just unmute yourself and say, break into it. Or raise your hand. Is it working? To... It's working. Okay. If you want to check your microphones, you can do that now, if you haven't done it before. For those of you who have done it, no. All right. Victor for the extra XP in garb. All right. If I had more than a half minute head start, I'd be in garb. All right. I, I've done that if I realized there was extra XP for that. We should probably make that a thing, I guess. Yeah, we could be in we could be in garb for for that. So when we have multiple game systems, we'll be like, okay, we're done with missing legends. Now we're gonna talk apocalypse. And then you switch into your other character. I see no problem with quick changes. This That's is right. this is not a problem. This can be done. Need some elevator music while everyone's changing. I mean, I may or may not have done a quick change at a game by a tree standing out in the middle of nowhere. Just saying. I mean, if I'm going from myths and legends to post-apocalyptic, I just got to change a wig. Okay, so first thing we're going to talk about is the square shield clarification. It was the... If you... We, we try to keep a timeline in the elder meeting notes of things we want to talk about. If players bring up specific questions and you would like to talk about it during an elder meeting, feel free at any time to post things that we want to talk about. But this way we keep a record of it um, so we don't forget because it's pretty easy to forget month to month of topics we need to talk about. So an overview of this conundrum was some people were like, well, you're going to have to measure a square shield from square to square or from point to point instead of end to end, which would give roundies a, it would make two different classifications of how to measure a shield, which is the problem I have. Keep it simple, but um, what do you, what do you, if you haven't read the, the scroll, feel free to go ahead and do that now and then post your, post your comments. What do you think? You're muted, Murdoch. Everybody's reading. So those of you who are viewing, there's not something wrong with your audio. We're just reading. I, I was yelling at him, Victor, so he knew what we were talking about since he just came on. So we're going through point number one, the shield, how to measure a shield. 
Uh, so our understanding, it's always been corner to corner. Longest point. No, longest point to longest point, yeah. Did that change? Is there a reason we really need to discuss this? I've never measured point to point. I've always measured top to bottom, side to side. So if I'm doing it wrong, let me know. If I remember correctly in the post, you actually said corner to corner as the first response. I've always understood it as long as point to point myself. I know that's what I did when I made my shield is I used the longest measurement for what size it was. That's why I went with the large. This is incredibly easy. I don't really get why it was such a big deal except for the new giant square ones. That's your first measurement. And then the link, there's your second. I mean, some of them are gonna get a little bit of extra coverage and some of them are gonna lose a little bit, but that's the shield shape you went with. So unless we're gonna start calculating surface area, I, I don't see why that was that big a deal. I'm, it's just I, a, uh, what, uh, what, I, what I think the deal is, is does it say in the rules how we measure shields? I don't think it actually says that. I don't believe it does. I'm pretty sure it just gives you a maximum length. So it's kind of left up to um, we just have that. It can't have anything bigger than that length on the shield oh, yeah. at any point. So most people are going to do corner to corner to try and make sure it's within that amount. Yeah. I always took that as at the widest point or whatever it actually says. It's, it's not like they open up. They're not transformers. They're not going to get... It just seems overcomplicated. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we, we've always just said whatever the widest point is, measure yeah. that. The longest point is, measure that and make sure it stays within specs. I, I really don't see any other way to do it. So I mean, unless we're going to get crazy complicated, it just seems that simple. See, and I, I've, in all the years I've been doing this, I've literally taken a tape measure from the top and just thrown it down to the bottom. I've never even gone corner to corner. That never even crossed my mind to think, oh, that's an extra inch. Okay. It says from edge to edge. Does it say edge to edge? Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. Okay, for example, here's medium shield. Cleave point value two, size from 14.1 inches or 36 centimeters in diameter up to 20 inches in diameter, 51 centimeters from edge to edge. So it specifies diameter and edge to edge. And nowhere else does it say anything about other ways to, uh, to measure the shield. We've been doing it the same way Book was talking about every time I've measured a shield. So, Okay. I'm not sure what else we can do. The only place that says anything different is the newest extra large shield. What does that say? Max length, max no. width. Yeah. Tower max shield says it the same way. Tower and big shield are one way, medium and large are edge to edge. So there's a discrepancy. Probably an oversight since they were added in later, maybe written by you know, just different times. Oh, I hate changing the rule book. Well, that, that, that's the reason why you're wanting to have the rules council is have someone go through and edit it and make sure all the discrepancies like that are you know taken care of. So we because I'm not I'm not going to edit it. I refuse to edit it right now. I'm not changing this version, the PDF, then the regular print version. Then I have to go back and reload it to everything. Then I have to reload it to the server. Then I have to. We're I elders. We know it's edge to edge. That's Fine. Good. Go. Right. Hey, is Why it don't you use an errata page? That's what? what I was going to. An errata. It's something that game designers use. Like Watsi and Paizo use this for their tabletop systems where they just have an errata page that has all the changes in it. It just basically says, oh, we misprinted this part. See this page. This is what's the misprint. This is what it should say. Or it has... You can also use that for interpretations of rules, can't you? Um, yes. So my understanding 
can yes, use it. It, it, will, it will say, go. Okay. Yes. This this rule we found to be interpretable several different ways. This is the current understanding based on uh, what the elders decided. This is the interpretation we're going with. We could just put that in the notes after the elder meeting when we do something like uh, the thing with the channeling last time. Just put we it put in. Put it there in the change it log. Out, the book. It was in the change log or whatever. Yeah. Just print it. Stick it in your rule book. Done. Exactly. See, but then the rule books are all out of date going forward. So when somebody buys a fifteen dollar okay. rule book. Okay. Paizo core rule book is like fifty bucks. People still use the errata page. Just saying. Well, one of the things you could do is put on like in the last page of the book. See uh, this page for any possible changes or additions, and yep. then just include them in for the next year. Not touching it. I refuse. I'm not doing we'll any just, more work. Not doing any more. People in person. Hey, check the change log. The rule book's still ninety percent right, but we found a couple of little misprints and errors. I mean, we can work. And these are things most people like the shield thing. We've all been kind of doing it apparently the same way without being told because. There's only so many ways you can measure a shield. And we were all doing it the easy way, you know, with a tape measure. There you go. But I've never measured point to point sideways like this. Me either. I never thought about it. Wait, which way is it widest? It says it the, the edge to edge. Yep, it fits. Why do we need to change anything? The first three things on the shield say from edge to edge. Common sense says edge to edge is going to be the rest of them. But – because there was a question. <laughs> what I'm hearing is corner to corner, not edge to edge. Are those the same thing and I'm just really dumb or? No, the rules state edge to edge. Yeah, so but what's an edge? Because <laughs> they're all edges. Not a square is a corner to side. You can't say the word edge. It's not going to get you anywhere. Corners are the points on the keyboard, Ryan. Edges are the top, bottom, and sides. If somebody pushes corner to corner on that big cup and shieldy thing, measure the itty bitty points and then go, okay, now you can't use it. And then watch how fast they want you to go wide edge to wide edge. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I measure it at its widest and if it fits, then it's in that. And are we that following the curvature? I love it. Because this wasn't a big deal before it with the smaller shields. Epic Armory is now making literal barn doors that are curved like this, you know, the Roman shield style. So are we following the curve or are we going straight across? Whichever's wider. Measure, there's not really a way to go straight across unless you're measuring it against the back of the shield, which doesn't make any sense. So you're following the contour of the shield. Just yeah. we're all doing it right. I, I, yeah. You tell me what you want to do, but that's okay. going to give you a better that's idea. The area. <laughs> okay. Just so we're all on the same page. This is curved a little, and I lost like a quarter of an inch not taking the curve into account. So it's negligible. Now, with a deeper curve, you're going to lose more, but. Okay. Um, make a note, somebody, to put that in the shield making area community, the shield creation community. Like if you're mapping out how to make your shield make sure that you're following the same guidelines that we're measuring by not that somebody makes a uber large tower shield and now it's off by an inch and a half it's too big because they we weren't measuring so provide some and then when we do the redo the videos i will definitely mention it like that and i'll probably well, end up start off flat anyway to the maximum then when you curve it, you're going to keep the same surface anyway, so it shouldn't matter. He's right. If you're just measuring from the edge on a curved shield, when you put if you pushed it straight down, it'd still be the same measurement. That's true. Mm -hmm. I think what he was talking about was, okay, you have the curved shields. Yeah, if you push it in against this, it's the same as up here. But if you go, like, right here, then it's going to be a different measurement going from 
that way, if that makes any sense. It sounded better in my head. <laughs> Basically, what you're saying, I think, Serena, is if you measure it on the front where it's curved, it's going to be different than if you measure it on the back where you're measuring and not taking into account that curve. And I, I think most of us would just measure across the front. Yeah. Because that's where it would be the widest. Yeah, I think if anybody brought a Spartan shield with that giant dome, nobody's going to take and press it to the dome and measure the whole surface area. A good example, Kim, would be Rolex new shields with them cur are, are arced up like they were. Measuring it side to side is going to be the same as when it, they're flat down. Yes, not everybody has seen Rolex new shields, which is why I was trying to do the and example thing, which, yeah, sounds better in head, I think, yeah. So I'm measuring it, taking it, like even with the big dome shields, I'm just putting one end of the tape measure on it, hooking it, holding it, and just wrapping it around to where I can feel it. Because, I mean, from, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. That's right, right? <laughs> from, from top to bottom and from side to side. Okay, okay, okay. We're straight. We're, We're clear. clear. Good. And after all, don't we want people to be playing with the stuff they brought if we possibly can let them do it? I mean, unless it's like, oh, I've only got buckler, but they bring in that new door. It's a buckler because I grip it this in No, that's not. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking a guy that's like a quarter inch over, and he's like, oh, I didn't know. And Well, we had that problem come up, too, where somebody's like, you know, I have a wooden core in my thing. We, we, we frown upon metal and wood cores, but it's the hard object at the discrepancy of the local chapter. I mean, the problem I have with that wooden and metal core is it's a mobile object. It can actually, you know, hit something, and that is the problem that I find. I mean, sure, when we're wearing steel and leather and all that, hard armor but that's not mobile unless you like punch someone with your gauntlet but you shouldn't be doing that anyway right but uh, yeah so that's i can see why you wouldn't want steel or wood in your uh, cores for shields <laughs> so we're all in agreement that we're still not using wood and steel and hard objects as cores okay i don't and want just, my daughter whacked in the head with a steel shield just want to re revisit some of these things to make sure we're all on the same page. I also don't think you're gonna see. Sorry, I don't think you're gonna see a lot of people want to carry around a metal core shield with with the bigger ones. They're gonna get worn out and they're gonna to want to drop their shield anyways. And I don't want Rory hitting me in the head with a metal shield. She hits hard enough as it is. It's not the head Rory hits people in. Well, okay. that's debatable. I didn't the other know head. which head. She too little. Okay, okay. Left All field. right, so Wolfric, do you want to um, answer that post? You were pretty much spearing that one up anyway, and I think you had it right. But just, we talked about it in the elder meeting. Yes, this is how we're doing it. We've all decided it was unanimous. Okay. All right, so just to clarify, because I did come in almost halfway through. Surface, face, angle, you know, edge to edge, no wood, no metal, cause, good. Tag, you're it, Wolfric. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next subject. See, right now we're all friends. <laughs> and we're going to go back into the channeling touch spells again for like the seventh or eighth time. Um, and here we go. go. Let me go get my pitchfork. <laughs> yeah, where's the lighter? Where's the lighter? No, wait, wait. Uh, our channel appreciate this. More grog. on fire, right? I want them alive, no disintegrations. So there was a post. Okay, I guess. Um, <laughs> What's happening? Oh, okay. I'm gonna meet him. Got him. I got him. 
So first off, as the elder team, so we can try and be a cohesive unit of voice. If there's something that we're not entirely sure about, or it's going to be opinionated or may come across opinionated, please let's talk about this in the elder section first before something would what we what we're trying to do is again have that one voice so i'm more concerned about how we function as a group not particularly about each subject matter that we're posting on most of it is very clear and it's getting more clear as as more players come on so but it's still still evolving so um pat uh pather c um was disagreeing laws caster to channel any elemental magic through their one hand um so i mean he's just verbatim putting what is in the rule book um trying to not be brash about it uh i am totally guilty of not posting correctly a lot of times so um try and be as friendly as you can So we're, we're giving opinions on something that clearly states what can and can't be done. So that is the, in my opinion, that's the real issue because um, I don't know that it did it really have to go past what Pat said. I mean, it was short, it was sweet. But then we all kind of like word puked into this scroll, which kind of confused things and emotions got involved and. I think I missed the subject change. What are we talking about? Uh, the weapon, let's see, channeling, touch spells. Okay. Because I think we were all on the same page with the elemental. It was the fact that because it is a, a – you have to spend a skill slot on it, it's the fact that we're being restricted. Even though we spent the skill point, we have to spend extra mana to use the, the skill. So I think that's where we all got confused on. And – if I have to pay for the skill and I have to, in both a slot and mana, I want to be able to use it whenever I please, you know? Does that make sense? It definitely makes sense. The XP adjustments went down for touch spells. And it wasn't taking into account that you can still weapon channel a touch spell or the touch spell got more powerful because it lost its range. So <clears throat> I just, uh, as we go through this here, please watch that, that it's not something that will be so broken that people will be like, I'm out of here. So. Yeah, last week was 
stacking with coin down with uh, what what did you say Nick? I don't know, something's missing. Something what? Is that better? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Uh, okay, good. I was saying, yeah, last week we were discussing, uh, last, last month we were discussing the whole stacking with weapons and channeling and cleave. Uh, this week it's the whole subject of weapon channeling where uh, we, you know, is it overpowered? Is it like, should it still stay with the safety of only using it at night time when, you know, it's dark and you could lose your spell orbs and stuff like that. That's what I think we're discussing here, right? Um, I don't know. It says you can use it for any touch spell. I don't understand why touch spells make a difference here. It, I mean, maybe somebody can explain that to me. I mean, personally, my issue with the whole weapon channeling is it pretty much guarantees a spell will hit. Whereas, you know, when you throw a spell up, there's still a chance it'll miss. So it makes it... There's a chance to miss with a swing, too. Well, if, say, you got someone with a shield, what's their first reaction going to be when you're swinging your sword at them? Block it with their shield. If you cast before, they should know what you're doing. Um, not in the heat of combat, though. Not always. Hmm. That's... Even at the lowest spell casting time, five seconds is an eternity in a fight. 20 seconds is like four fights. Pretty well in yeah. That's what we said last week about trying to stack spells with Cleave, that if you're doing the incant, you got plenty of time to know. That's exactly what we came up with last time. So Right, which is why we're saying it shouldn't, like, the... When you know how we're using it shouldn't really matter if the war if people are paying attention to you casting you should either end up dead or they should back away from or you. if they're not yep. paying attention that's kind of their fault for not paying attention to their surroundings on a battlefield yep uh, I will be one of the first to admit that I use weapon channeling a, a lot because my voice doesn't carry and in the heat of battle people can't even hear me in camp much less say what I'm what I'm casting so I'm like I got into the habit of using it so I'm up in battle so people can hear me and know what's going on. I think out of the how many years I've been playing LARP, I've landed one hit with a weapons channel. And this is primarily down in deep light where you can't even hear people talking normally down there, when, primarily when you have elf ears on or any sort of mask on. You just can't hear down there. So it, you know, out of all the years of playing down there and being out, I think I've really only ha landed one weapons channel hit. So and I'm not Nick to the missing thing. The, the, <clears throat> again, it's the same pattern with this question over and over again, but the ultimate thing is weapon or spells can be channeled. I, we can't change it now. They can be blocked. We can't change that now. So how about we just not bring up the old stuff anymore? And I'm talking to myself. I'm like listening to myself. So... With, when you weapon channel the spell, when is it discharged? Like, how can you tell? I mean, you swing your sword, say you miss, and swing back and hit again. Is it discharged on the second attack or the first attack? How can you tell? Because just like poison, if you miss someone, the poison's still on the weapon. What about with the weapon channeling? No one has actually discussed that. I know. Actually, around uh, here, we've always played it as it's discharged on the swing. Um, but that's, again, around here, and that's because we kind of were like, okay. Yes. I can agree with that. However, what happens if you faint your swing to go in for another one? Yeah. Make you're it not like actually, You're not actually calling oh. weapon channeling, but you're still calling the spell? Oh. Right? Or no? I think it's pretty uh, obvious if you're calling the spell that you're weapon channeling. Yeah. yeah. You didn't need to say both of them. But there is a verbal element, right? I mean, that's still there. I always announce my spell when I use it, because yeah, otherwise people won't know what I'm doing. You're, you're supposed to. If, if I'm not remember correctly, yeah. it's actually in the rules that the last thing you say is the spell, as it either as it hits the person or as you're throwing it, you have to announce the spell. That way, they know what they're getting hit with and they know how to react. Yeah, okay. I kind of view that as like a like a one-time enchantment kind of thing. 
Yeah, usually we say weapon channel spell, like a single sentence kind of thing when we're doing that attack. So that would make sense too. I just make do it, it like I'm regular. Like it's just a regular up. cast. But instead of throwing it, I'm channeling it. Sure. Okay, any questions on that? I mean... It sounds like we're all on the same page. Okay, then we'll move on. Um, can I just delete that post? <laughs> oh, seriously, what should we do with that post? It's a pretty negative it's post. It's fine. It'll get buried with everything else. <laughs> If you want to delete it, go ahead. Otherwise, um, you can put at the end, go on pretty much. This was discussed in the elder meeting, including how we should take care of our actions. Uh, we need to touch base before stating our own opinions. We All have right. this, this, and this. There Sounds will be no good. Why don't you go ahead and do that? <laughs> I can't close threads. You can. Yeah, we don't yeah. want people necroing this. So just so that we followed up and... Said okay, we addressed it. We talked about it, and then we we'll uh, move I, on. I do like what Maliostro brought up. Uh, should we should we make it so you have to have the spell ball in your hand and then drop it once you do a weapon channel, like you would be casting it? It's not That's in the rule book. Really funky. That that sounds like a bad idea. I mean, well, the idea of weapon channeling was so you weren't dropping or throwing spell lords in the first place in the dark. And as a two-handed user, how am I going to be holding onto an orb and swinging a two-hander around to cleave or anything like that? Or dual wield or use a shield or hang on to your kid who's trying to run off. And the whole point was, like you said, not to lose the orbs in the first place. Not a bad well, the kid could be expendable. Okay. Um, okay, next thing was the hyperventilating comment from Raelic about the heraldry stuff that we want to clear up some of the heraldry stuff, explain it more. Um, okay. Now, My understanding is something we wanted to add but if you don't want to do it don't do it i think as as someone who um just kind of observed most of this um i think where some of the issue came in is there was kind of a feeling like if you didn't do this your group or whatever was not going to be taken seriously and, and that was, I think, part of the issue was there's a lot of people that really don't want to do heraldry, um, didn't particularly like the way that it was set up, but we didn't see it until like a couple weeks ago, mostly because it was in a subgroup about heraldry. So the idea behind the community was you got into subgroups based on the things you were interested in. So it was posted in the heraldry group. Well, everyone in the heraldry group is already interested in heraldry. That's why they're in the heraldry group. Well, so some of us there. didn't pay attention to it because it's it was in the heraldry group. It's and posted all over the place. Not just, it's, uh, it started off in the blog, so you don't even have to be a part of heraldry to see it. Um, it think it, the heraldry group started off, what, two months after the blog post started? Um, it was then going on Facebook, talking about it in the chat. We had put that in as many places as we possibly could for people to see it for about a good six months before we decided, hey, well, about five months before we went, hey, let's, have, let's hold a vote, make sure, you know, are we ready to move this forward? We put a, a vote up, held it open for a month. When we got back from our large trip, we're like, okay, we haven't, it's been passed majority, there hasn't been any new votes passed. Let's go ahead and call it good and start working on the final details on what we need to do to have this be our own thing. Yeah. Right, and I get book, that. <clears throat> book, you have a you, wait, usually there's a wait, vote. Um, you have a point, um, Kim. Um, 
I tried to get you to corral that subject. <clears throat> Book has a point where it should have been either linked or better on the site. Community stuff was is not where vital information lives. And so I should have linked that heraldry section at like the bottom of the rule book, like the optional heraldry is here. The reason why it was in a community is because that way the admins of the heraldry stuff could move things around and change it. And it's a lot less permission heavy from an administration standpoint. So I, I goofed and I didn't put, the right amount of links on stuff. If, if I may, going forward as a way to solve this issue, um, at least on, on my end, mm -hmm. what would be really helpful is if there's a vote going on about something that we want to do in the game, that's going to be a really important thing to do in the game. Can we send out a, a link or a notification to all the elders and say, hey, there's a vote going on? Because I had no idea there was a vote going on until the vote was over. And as a host, that shouldn't happen. Or, I, I find out that a vote happened after the fact. Or if I can also recommend posting it or saying it verbally here in the elder meeting, making sure everybody's atten paying attention. Hey guys, we're having a vote. We're having a vote. Vote. Go vote. Not all the hosts and elders are here in the elder meeting, though. No, but we've had votes before where we received notice, like, hey, there, there's a vote going on. You should weigh in on this as elders. That's happened before. Yeah, again, I, I'm sorry. That, I'm just, there's so much crap going on right now. I apologize. It also was brought up in multiple elder meetings. Yeah, so. but not like on a vote setting. But there, there my, was elder there was a vote going. I've been at every elder meeting. So since we started. So I, I don't remember ever getting that notification or I would have. My whole elder team would have voted because every time there's a vote, I send my elder team a message that says, hey, there's a vote going on that you should weigh in on. And the voted. But we had no idea until that vote was already done. Um, and I'm, I'm trying not to be like, I, I'm trying not to be negative. I'm trying to be positive going forward so that this doesn't happen again. Because this is an easy fix. Tell people that there's a going on. So, well, to, what was I say? So, the main problem with that then is that a lot of people just didn't know about the vote, so they felt kind of left out about it. Or is it that? they're worried about a system that's purely optional and they feel obligated to do it now and they weren't ready for the system? I think it's a little I'm bit of both. I think it's a little bit of both. As, as an elder and a host, my issue was that I wasn't informed that there was a vote going on. As some of my players have come to me and talked to me about it, some of their issue is they think that because we've got a lot of in-game groups, that if we don't do heraldry, then those groups are not going to be taken seriously because this is another level of immersion. And yes, it is, but a lot of them have their own banners. They've got their own colors. They've got all of this stuff that's already been created and they don't necessarily want to conform. It's just a submission. It's not a, conf it's not a conforming thing. So if you want to address it to the players, what we're trying to do is protect those designs that they have on a larger scale if we can so you know we've been we've been doing logos and banners and heraldry stuff since we started and this is just a way so that we don't overlap and and another thing that is meant for is because I, I don't know about other groups but down over here we had for a long time a huge problem with players pulling in copyrighted material they would not listen they'd sneak it in they're showing up in, um, in photographs we had a major issue and we could not get it to stop. Now, so, well, some of it was like Bethesda imagery. Bethesda is very, very Sue happy. This is a way to protect LARPcraft as a whole, saying, okay, we have this system, 
that player did not listen to our system, snuck the image in behind our backs, we could not get them to leave, or the picture was taken before they left, and was still posted online, this is our way to protect, it's kind of like a safety net for the system to say, this is not our fault, it's that person, it's that person, it's all on them. We told them not to, and the system itself, it's kind of a way for us to not get in trouble. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, it's sounding way better in my head than it is out loud. All right. It's something that you're passionate about, and so you're gonna you're you're gonna be passionate yeah, about. The migraine doesn't help. So. Everything sounds fuzzy. <laughs> I understand. I'm fighting a headache at the moment myself, so I, I get it. Um, I think another one of the issues that was brought to my attention, and I'm not sure if I'm remembering this correctly, but it looked like there were certain standards of this is how many colors you can use, or this is how the standards have to look. And that didn't sit really well because a lot of our players are very artistic and they like to design yeah. their own. The only thing that I'm really, really looking for besides is this a modern thing that we can get in trouble for is how does it look across the field and can you tell that it is what it's supposed to be? Like, I mean, uh, Victor's been put through something that kind of looks like an arrow, but I'm like, okay, Celtic tree, that works fine, but we're all good there. But like, you know, the re like some of the certain color things that are rules of thumb, so to speak, it's so like white on yellow, you ain't going to see those across the field. It's very, it's, it's, to, it's just a visual thing to kind of help keep visual appeal going. And so it is noticeably recognizable. It's like the biggest rule of thumb. Th this seems to be outlining, uh, again, that kind of cultural divide that we have between Missouri and the the in Wisconsin and potentially Australia sometimes sometimes not is that we've never had those problems we don't field armies here and we don't have an issue with copyright and infringement so I'm not saying that that's like yay us or anything like that I'm just saying we have different sets of problems and it's sometimes hard for us to understand the things that are going on in Wisconsin that are actually an issue because we don't see it and so when we get, you know, when we hear like, oh yeah, this needs to happen. You go, no, wait, when did it need to happen? Well, we don't, we don't understand why it needs to happen. So. Right. But as long as what we're saying needs to happen, isn't like stomping on anybody's toes and we just clarify then that should just be all right. Yeah. And one of the things is remember as the system gets huge and larger and larger, these problems that each of our groups are seeing, it's going to start overlapping and seeping into everybody's things. So like, say you guys are having a problem with something, you guys can go, hey, can this be a thing because we're having a huge problem with it? And we'll be like, yeah, sure. So that way it kind of, like a weed, you pull it before it gets too bad. It's kind of like you're, we're just tending a huge garden and we're trying to get everything to run smoother now. So when we have huge hundred person a week games and we're having huge world events with thousands of people coming, it's just that much easier to try and run everything. I'm just gonna go ahead. Go ahead. In regards to um, you know how when people we start getting lots and lots more players, people are start gonna be buying the same products. For example, the shields from Epic Armory. They have the same design on them. How are we going to deal with that? Um, that's the one actually that Murdoch's been pop, popping to me quite recently. It's they bought it. They, they sold it. They bought it. It's on the company at that point. Um, it's pretty much I mean, like why you can use Disney stuff. Like, you know, you can go to Disney and wear a princess dress and whatnot. It's they sold the, they sold the image. They sold the thing, which kind of lets it's no, no, no. The copyright. I don't mean like copyright stuff. I mean, like, for example, uh, Epic Armory might have a shield that has, you know, green and white or something like that. And, you know, they sell like 30 of them to different LARPers. How do we deal with, you know, someone using green and white if it's like, you know, a specific person's heraldry already? Well, like, if, honestly, if someone comes to me and goes... What? We're not he's got this one. The stuff that's pre-packaged from Epic, there's no way we're going to avoid people having the same thing. That's just impossible. It's uh, it's just like if people go and buy the officially licensed Cinderella dress and you got five of them, it's the same thing. If somebody goes and buys it, they went and bought it, and that's that. And especially with the Epic Shields, I don't think any of those are – I think they have a few officially licensed products, but I don't think any of them are Shields. 
So it's not going to be a problem. And two guys are going to end up with the same epic shield. That's just going to happen. Unless you start repainting them, that's that. But then it's still not their thing. It's the one they bought. I mean, I got three of them. And it's the way they came in the package. And a lot of it, uh, you, you know, you've got the image itself on the shield versus the color in the background. So uh, they could have, two people could show up to the field with a green and white shield, but one of them could have the wolf head on it. The other one will have the crescent moon or the arrow Celtic tree or whatever Kim's going to call my heraldry next. Yeah, but he's talking about the ones that come straight from Epic already painted. So like Steel just got the black and white checky one. And I guarantee you there's somebody else going to buy that is that's uh, my son's actual shield, his arms. No, that's the one he bought from Epic. And if somebody else shows up with the same one, good for them. They spent money and got a good product. Buy Epic Armory stuff from me or from Ryan. A little product, product plug there. But yeah, I mean, the stuff that's prepackaged is one. We all have the same swords and stuff showing up too. Unless you're making it yourself, it's you're going to have the same... Uh, Calamassel this sword or Epic Armory that sword or Pataloki this sword so put your name on your stuff because it all looks like can I post make a little comment I, this one's geared towards what Book had said before about all of her people had their own little things that all breaks down to that's heraldry it's a way of identifying you it has nothing to do with it being mandatory it's also, this way, it saves their players from other people doing the same thing. But that's just my take on it. And it's all optional and on the anyways. shield thing, and on the shield thing, you know, you can make a cloth cover that goes over your epic shield that has your device on it. It's called a little sewing or maybe some fabric paint on a piece of fabric kit. Tie over it. Yeah, but that's like work. Well, you know, but I'm just saying. It's a little effort to make your stuff look better. And that also will come work blasphemy right now. That'll also come a progression as players start teaming up either as guilds or factions or beyond. They will try to coordinate their tabards, possibly repaint their shields, make their weapons look the same, or put the emblems on. Some will do it, some won't. It's just it's going to be Part of the progression of getting larger, more groups will want to identify with said groups, and some won't. I don't really see that there's really a big issue. What we're trying to do with the vote is try to make it where the process is what we're trying to do. And while we have a lot of European stuff on there, we still have to add the Native American and the Asian parts of it. So if you have anything, please share it with the heraldry group. I will link that in the bottom of the Myths and Legends thing on the main page. And if it needs to be moved once you see it on there, again, post in the Elder section. We also need to acknowledge that uh, we live in a fantasy world. And some things are going to be completely original. Like most of you guys have probably seen Metomir's logo. That was an original piece of art that was done by Reneth. It didn't come from any any of those things other than she she created a piece of art and made a logo out of it. Yeah, that, that's oh. kind of what I've been help, um, working on with doing the, with all this is not only, you know, I'm using the European stuff as a base because I know where to find it. It's easier for me to figure out. It's just easier on me to figure, you know, to handle it all because it's more readily available. We know more about it. Um, I've got someone uh, around here who's focusing on Native American and how that heraldry works and is actually teaching me a lot more about it. Uh, I didn't even know Native Americans had anything sort of compar comparable to heraldry. Um, I mean, Netsis, I think, I think your arms were completely hand-drawn by you. I mean, and I'm, the only thing I'm trying to figure out, like, I'm really stomped on is, like, uh, creature creation. At what point does a chimera creature have too many animal parts? That's really what's what uh, one of the things that's got me stomped on, because I don't really want having, like, I don't know, a creature with eight different animal parts is kind of very confusing. Well, so to touch on what Book said, you're right. What I have, my tree and the eye, everything that is submitted by me is stuff that I made. 
I have never looked at heraldry before. It was just a shot in the dark, and you know, I liked it. It may be kind of difficult. Other people may mistake it, but if in the end I, you're at peace with it and it follows the rules, then there you go. And the rules aren't even so much more rules as they are guidelines so that whatever people look at it, it's more of like, well, you may have something that looks too busy. They can't tell what it is, but if in the end that's what you want, go for it. But that, so, that, that. so I don't think perhaps we post more in the heraldry section that it is open. I mean, Victor submitted original designs. My undead thing was totally, it would not pass a European design at all. Uh, we, we made most of these things fantasy elements that won't pass traditional um, historical reenactment things. So uh, we just want to be able to protect, you know, symbols like the metal mirror thing and all of these cool creations that people are coming up with so that they can use them and nobody else can use them. I mean, I Honestly, know. what people should be looking at when they look at the heraldry stuff that, that Kim has taken the time to submit all of those other images is something to base it on. Like, if you have no idea what heraldry is, these are some of the images you could take any of those things and mold it, shape it, or say, well, that looks real cool. Well, what if I were to take and do this? Or contact any of the people who are comfortable with it and say, hey, can you help me with this? Or this is something I'm interested in. Uh, you know, where do I go from here? But in the end, the big thing to remember is that it's all optional. It was, I'm pretty sure it was stated in the scrolls that if you are in a group and you've been running with your heraldry from you know, the beginning, even if you don't submit it, you're going to be considered just as big. It's just we may never have heard of you because if we're looking online, we go to an event, we see that flag, and it's like, oh, well, I wonder who that is. Instead of, wow, this flag has been posted at these battlegrounds. These guys kick butt here. Or maybe even not so much that they kick butt. And I'm going to wrap this subject up because we have like nine minutes left. The lore associated with that heraldry could be, oh, in the third age of such and such, this was, you know, like it, it can be a story element. It can be a talking point for the characters instead of, well, oh, great, now this is here and oh my gosh. So keep it in mind that it's not always about battles and kingdoms and crap. It's always, you know, it also represents the history in a visual form. So, oh. okay, now go. It be great if we could have like a knight's tournament where you choose the heraldry that you want to fight against by hitting that shield, just like getting a knight's tail, for example. How cool would that be? It'd be very cool. Very cool. I would like to welcome our new chapters i probably should have done that in the beginning until instead but um yeah, let's go crazy before we welcome them yeah you know everything's backwards so we have um chicago still coming on board i know there's a few others that we're looking at it uh west virginia california like there's it's just a process of talking back and forth through the scroll. So what we're trying to do in the host section and the other section is provide our new chapters with uh, valuable resources that are easy to use. So if you have any suggestions as we're making them, please feel free to post them. And know that all of these elders here are typically available online to help you. So if you have questions about anything or anything, just feel free to ask. The chapters who utilize the resources of other chapters tend to be more successful quicker. So, and those who try to post events such as practices and battlegrounds and meet and greets and if you're doing stuff, people are excited because you're doing stuff, even if they can't make it. So, but you got to post it or they won't know. Guys in Chicago, let us know when you have stuff. We're close by. 
we don't mind coming down as long as we don't have to drive on the toll roads too much. But please let us know. We want to help that giant population center grow. Yes. And we will have training that elders and hosts will be able to take. Eventually, that's going to be stuff we want you to do as recap. Think of it less of this group and more of now we've got 100 chapters with 1,000 elders. Obviously, we can't all be on here at the same time. So we'll be breaking up the elder meetings, but then also having a larger format of submission. So those of you who haven't done your insurance yet, uh, if you haven't seen that post, you can put that in, you can do that. Um, get them in for the, for the, for the USA. Ours comes up at the end of April. And some of us have events right away in May, so we have to get that done. So please, if, pretty please submit your insurance money or they won't give me a permit for my event on May, on May 12th. Do any and of the I'm new so chapters have any? Together. I'm sorry, what? I'm, I'm PayPaling you tonight, but it took a while to get all that together. Ours is really expensive this year. No problem. Uh, the new chapters, again, you have, um, does anybody have any questions? The, the, I know I got three of the new chapters online right now here with us. Okay. I am still working on some of the the link system. You can see the links are now starting to come online. I'm going to need help with that eventually. There's going to have to be someone who's helping me with that. Um, what we're doing as a new chapter comes online is we're creating a Google account. I'm setting up and verifying their um, YouTube page because I have to because it links to GoDaddy through LARPcraft to verify their YouTube page. Uh, we set up their Facebook, Twitter, and their community. And then I take that information and I hand it off with all the usernames and passwords and then they run it. So that seems to work pretty good. That way all the things are done correctly. Thank you for liking the new chapters. We need 25 likes in order to change the URL to their custom name without a whole bunch of numbers at the end. And you've been a very intricate part of that process. So as we get started in our busy season for most of us, um, I'll continue to put up the pre-registrations. Uh, that's a new function. And then I'm making a tutorial in the whole section of how to do that. And I was talking with some of the elders. What I'm trying to do is reduce the cost to chapters, um, whereas I'm trying to eliminate the recharge if possible. And the way we can do that with the forum software of pre-registration is you can donate a certain percentage of each event registration. And then if you do that, you don't have to recharge anymore. That was my idea. We'll continue to talk as hosts and elders about that. We're trying to make it as usable for as many people as possible. That was the reason why the Paris, Tennessee group left is they couldn't afford the recharge kit of $25 for half a million XP. So this is an expensive hobby. Um, but we want to make it so new chapters can come online and try it as well. But do we have a Facebook group chat for all hosts and elders to be part of? We do not have a Facebook chat, and I say that because we don't have 
quite a few people are not on Facebook or they don't check Facebook or it's another group of the 20,000 C's of groups that we have to keep track of. Another comment was, let's start a messenger. Well, that kind of sucks too, because then that thing's going off all night long. And then you turn it off and then you miss it all anyway. So, another reason why we don't do live event postings, like live video, people have already abused the crap out of that and everybody's turned off their notifications on it. So, if you want to do it, not up. I'm not against it at all. You know, it's your guys' and gals' decisions, but I'm trying to keep everything in one place, and that is in the elder community. So if you bury something in Facebook, I'm, a lot of us aren't going to see it. Not to say that the scrolls are any better, but we can sticky certain items. We can post downloadable resources in the resource section, that kind of stuff. Uh, Will, there's no in-game area for you yet. Uh, Gwen, there, did we put yours in, in the in-game area? I, th I know I got Maliostro's is in. So now if you post in that section, but I don't have all the inside links to your Miriam section. It was Iron Ports or whatever. He picked his spot on the Miriam map. We talked about it. We're trying to keep it in relation to our geographical area that's actual on planet Earth. So if it's a three days. Teacher Kelly as well. <laughs> what? So that's why Coffs Harbour is with Tetra Gully as well, on a small little section of islands. <laughs> so if you need help with that, feel free to talk about that in the Elder section. If you can't find something, post, let me know, and I'll help you find it. Everybody who's given suggestions for the website, thank you very much. I can't see everything, and I don't know how to interpret everything. So if there needs to be a link somewhere or a menu somewhere or stuff that's missing, I'm trying to connect all those dots now. Send me a private message or elder section or whatever. If there needs to be more, there's a lot of end parts to this thing and I'm trying to connect them now, now that we know that the ones that we are going to keep and working with. So, uh, and there is an app, one of the folks from Australia, I think, was gonna try to make an app, so we have a character sheet app. Or was that Metal Mirror? That might have been Metal Mirror. I had a player ask me the other day if we had one, and I, I told him to, to message you about it. Yeah, he messaged me, and I told him what the criteria would need to be, so he's working on it, he's gonna try it. So we have a more usable character sheet on a mobile device, and I said the other thing we need is a chapter transfer button, so they could transfer from mobile devices on site. Those are two things that I would like to have happen. So we're, we're trying it. Never thought we'd have the day we'd actually have mobile devices in game. You're not going to get rid of it. I mean, there's already mobile devices in game. So. And here I was training carrier pigeons for a reason. Yeah. Your phone's inside of it. Take it out of the pigeon. There it is. Okay, so uh, in the Elder link, please post that you watch the whole thing. Somebody give us a topic to uh, post. When you signed in, sign out. Do we have a topic or are we just going to say sign out? Your favorite um, flavor of ice cream. No, I'm, I'm thinking welcome to the jungle. <laughs> You're welcome. That's the way you should welcome all elders and new hosts. Alrighty. So post your welcome to the jungle out. 
and then I will take care of those XP submissions for such things. What did we okay. decide? I was getting yelled at. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle outro of some sort. April, we were going to try to do a town hall in character in garb. So I don't know when that's going to happen. It's going to probably be on, it's going to overlap something, I'm sure. But I think we said Friday night, a Friday night was going to be picked. So be watching for that. Okay. Thanks all for coming. Thanks for watching. Again, if you're watching this post in the video section, your thoughts and comments. Thank you.